Are you fighting the culture war? Are you concerned about the culture war? Do you think your side can win the culture war? Do you think the culture war matters? Welcome to Escaping the Echo Chamber. I mean, right now I'm seeing just so much concern, so much back and forth. You've got this side worried about things that have to do with our, you know, um, media and trivial things. Let's keep it real, trivial things. Um, if you're talking about Aunt Jemima, if you're talking about Uncle Ben, I'm like, does this really matter? And then people are saying, okay, it's not just Aunt Jemima, it's not Uncle Ben, it's that people are going too far. It's that today it's Aunt Jemima, tomorrow it's Uncle Ben, what will it be tomorrow? Will they ban cereal? Um, do you believe that? I'm just, I'm curious. Do you actually believe that that's what's on the menu? That soon, like, not just logos, but actual items will, oh, we're not gonna, you can't eat cereal anymore. I don't know. Because I'm trying to figure out why that's such a, uh, why these things are so important, why people spent so much time on Mr. Potato Head. And what's crazy is a bunch of this stuff happened in the midst of a global pandemic. So in the midst of a global pandemic, people were worried about Mr. Potato Head, Dr. Seuss, um, Aunt Jemima and Uncle Ben. Like, yeah, you know, people were out of work, businesses, lost businesses. There were people, I mean, just loss of income, locked in their uh, uh, houses and apartments, j just without health care. Like there was so many problems happening last year. I'm curious how people found the time to be worried about stuff that really didn't have any effect on the vast majority of our lives. Like, you know who might have been affected by Dr. Seuss? Like somebody who sold Dr. Seuss books? And even in that case, if you were somebody who sold the Dr. Seuss books that were pulled, like that would mean that the price that you could get for those books went up. I'm just saying, the question is, I'm wondering how people were so much more upset about things like that, about Gina Carano being uh, let go from uh, The Mandalorian, than about $2.2 .2 trillion being stolen from us. You remember the CARES Act? Like, does anybody remember the CARES Act? The most, the largest robbery <laughs> in history. Like, it was, it was an armed robbery, it was... But it didn't even need to be an arm robbery because they just they just distracted everybody. Look at this. And then just stole all this money. Meanwhile, they started printing money. By the way, if you've looked at the inflation numbers, setting records, you know, so they, they robbed us last year and we're still feeling the effects even more so this year. You know, and it reminds me of what happened when the CARES Act was up for um, up for vote. And. You had, so like the question is if the CARES Act was this massive theft because in later bills, like bills that came this year that Biden wanted to put through, you know, Republicans were like, no, that's too much money because we're the fiscally responsible ones. I'm like, did you look at how much money you just spent over the past four years? I'm like, I wouldn't call that fiscal responsibility, but that's just me and everybody else that knows what the definition of fiscal responsibility is. But. In, during the CARES Act, I'm like, okay, who's, who's the good guy? Who's actually standing up for the people during the CARES Act to say, no, this is ridiculous. You're not, because the vast majority of that money did not go to help people. It went to special interests. Who was the heroes for that? Republicans? Democrats? Or did they suddenly become bipartisan in working together to screw the rest of us over? I think that was the answer. Yeah, they, they, they worked together to make sure the rest of us got, you know, like the middle finger. However, there was at least one individual who stood up and said something, Thomas Massey. Now, I may disagree with Thomas Massey on some other things, but Thomas Massey stood up last year and said, hey, 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 this is an exorbitant amount of money. Why are we spending this much money how much of this doesn't have to do with actually um, just helping people out? And 
why are we going on the record with this vote? And they were like, hey, 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 stop. No, no. We're not, we don't want to go on the record. We do not, like, listen. Listen, this could come back to haunt us. So, no, we'll just do voice vote. He said, no, no, no. Everybody needs to get back here. I want this on the record. Do you remember what happened when he stood up and made that stance that he wanted everybody on the record for that vote to see who voted for and who voted against the CARES Act? Do you remember what happened? He got attacked. He got attacked by people in Congress, by people in the Senate. But he got attacked by some other people, too. He got attacked by Republicans. He got attacked by Democrats. But Trump had his back, right? He got attacked by Donald Trump. That was interesting. Because Donald Trump came out, started calling him like a loser, a lightweight, and stuff like that. And then somebody, and this was interesting, somebody who you wouldn't think jumped up next to Donald Trump and said, yeah, that guy's a loser. Do you know who that person was? John Kerry, the Democrat. Yes. So we watched a beautiful act of bipartisanship of the Republican president and a former Democratic presidential candidate coming together in unity to shame, bully, and, and name call the one congressman who was like, hey, this should not be happening like this. We need to be on the record to see who supports this bill and who doesn't. But he ultimately lost. They had enough people to just bulldoze over him and to make sure that that vote went through without anybody being on the record. It was a voice vote. And with the voice vote, certain people were able to pretend as if they didn't support it. So one individual was AOC. She says, oh, yes, I didn't endorse the bill. It's an interesting phrasing because and nobody bothered to ask the follow up question. Wait. You didn't bother to endorse it or you didn't vote for it because there's different things. Those are different statements. So did you vote for the bill um, or did you vote against the bill? That's a common occurrence with ALC, lack of follow up questions. And her answer, her initial answers are vague enough to be mis misinterpreted. And this happens over and over. But the point was. While everybody was focused on foolishness, we got robbed. And we're still feeling effects of that, the effects of that robbery right now. The last week, the inflation numbers came out and it's bad. It's really bad. I mean, pe some people are still out of work. Some people who are now back at work are still way behind in their bills. They've lost money. They've lost savings, had to go through savings. Some people didn't have savings. Some people still owe back rent. It's not over. So tell me, does Dr. Seuss and Mr. Potato Head really matter? Thank you for checking out this episode of Escaping the Echo Chamber. As always, don't forget to give me the thumbs up, like, share, subscribe. If you like this kind of content, if you have some ideas, things that you think I should be discussing, let me know in the comment section below and I will address it either in the comment section or in a future video. I'll see you next time.